there's something magical and beautiful that comes from every relationship. And when we're not placing blame on each other and actually taking responsibility and learning and growing and allowing the, 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 the seeds of this uh, sacred union to, to, to be buried in the dirt and, and to grow into something, when we're allowing that, th there's so much growth. <laughs> What's up, family? I'm Alexi Panos. I'm Preston Smiles. And welcome to this special edition of our podcast where we deep dive into all things from the female perspective. Yes. And the male perspective. Correct. A lot of male <laughs> perspective. I'm coming for you. I'm coming. Uh, and today, um, we are diving into a subject that is near and dear to our hearts. Uh, we have a community called Sanctuary, where spirituality and life coaching meet. And in this community, we often get questions and things that come up. And one of the things that has come up often is the conversation about whether someone is wasting their time in relationship and whether they are actually a good fit for their partner. Yeah, we get this so much. You know, people are like, how do I know if this is toxic, if this is my stuff, if this is his stuff, like, can we make it past this hump? And ladies, it's your stuff. <laughs> Men, it's your stuff. No, this is like the age old question, right? Um, first, I think to address this, we really have to talk about the uh, concept and the idea of what we think relationships should be. Because I think that's the first issue and barrier that we run into is the fact that we've got an entire society that was raised with a concept of Disney love. You know, it's like the, the movie ends when they fall in love. And it's like, okay, so we don't see any hardship. We see the hardship of getting to each other, but we don't see the hardship of what it takes to maintain. And I think it's important for people to first know that, especially conscious relationship, because a lot of people are like, once I find my conscious partner, everything will be great. And it's like, well, hold, mm -hmm. <laughs> actually, once we find our conscious partner, we have a partner who is more aware and more conscious of their stuff, but also maybe of some of your stuff too. So it can it can really um, open up a whole can of worms if we're not prepared for that. For sure. And uh, another thing to take note of, and we'll, we'll definitely dive into that, is the sort of understanding or the philosophy that I think both you and I have, which is you can't miss. I, th I think most people think that there is a wrong person and a right person. Yeah. And to me, there's only right now and right for you yeah. for whatever season, be it a 30 year season or be it a 30 day season. They are right for you because there's something magical and beautiful that comes from every relationship. And when we're not placing blame on each other and actually taking responsibility and learning and growing and allowing the 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 seeds of this uh, sacred union to 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 be buried in the dirt and and to grow into something when we're allowing that there's so much growth there's like you and I right so let's just go into that for a second uh Alexi and I've been together almost 10 years now and in that 10 years, we've had amazing, some of the highest highs and also some of the lowest lows. And I think being with somebody over an extended amount of time has taught me personally that all of it's a gift. Even the hardest moments, I think, have brought us closer. Oh, for sure. And that's the thing. I think a lot of people miss that, right? Like, and that was my thing too. It's like any conflict was bad. That was my programming. And I think the more that I mature and we mature together as a couple, the more I realize that conflict, um, struggle is an opportunity for deeper intimacy because any conflict we have is just two ideas bumping up against each other, right? And so if our ideas aren't matching, that's an opportunity for me to learn more about you, to learn more about uh, maybe what's missing, your needs, your desires, and same for me. And if we create more intimacy out of that, like 
isn't that a good thing? Mm. Isn't that a great thing? Mm. Um, not, ne- not that we want to move towards conflict, but that we welcome it when it does show up as an opportunity for more depth. Yes. Okay. Something just popped in, right? So oftentimes people want to know whether they're wasting their time yeah. in a relationship. And the short answer to that is yes and no. Yes, because you think so. No, <laughs> yes. because oftentimes in hindsight, people realize where their work was, yeah. right? They go into their second marriage and their third marriage and their 88th boyfriend, and they finally get that what happened with Craig in 1947 was actually showing up with Jason in 1992 right. and all the other dudes, right? And That's so, a long span of a, a exactly. relationship. <laughs> That's an old ass person. Uh, <laughs> but the point is, is that <laughs> you are wasting your time because you've been bamboozled, bamboozled into the idea that you're right. Mm, well, I want to just jump in on that. You're wasting your time because you are in your mind thinking about you're wasting your time. Correct. Right? Like your mind is the trap. And if you get stuck in that, that's the waste of time. Rather than being present to what's available, the lessons, the growth, the evolution, the expression, the invitations for more intimacy and depth, rather than being present to that, you're like, am I? Am I not? What's this? What's that? And you're analyzing something rather rather than being in it, right? Yes. All right, let's go into that for a moment. Because one of the things, you know, 10 years later, I've learned to do with you and really with all of life. But, you know, our our most intimate relationships are sacred training ground for oh, yeah. everything else. Best workshop right? on the planet. 100%. <laughs> I was already dope before I met you, but you have taken your way of being, how you see the world, how, how you move, how you dance. All of that has taken the the me that I knew myself as and leveled it up to degrees that I, I would never be able to get to without this sacred dance. What I've learned that has changed the game, and I'm just now working on this in a really, really powerful way, is learning to open, right? Energetically open, open my heart, right? Open my body up. When my ego mind and the wounds and the part of me that thinks I'm right is telling me to close, yeah. right? That is where most of the power is, is in those micro moments where you emotionally leave the room or physically leave the room and being able to come back into the room emotionally, being able to come back into the room physically and open one's heart and actually feel A, the pain, yeah. B, the joy, C, the sex, whatever is there, right? Just feeling it all. Because that's, to me, wh- where uh, our society, we, we've become so addicted to, to, to like staying out of pain. Yeah, but we don't realize that in in the the rupture is the opening. And in the opening is the experience. And in the experience is the love and the joy and the passion and the aliveness that we're all actually seeking in the money and the success and the fame and the respect and all the outside things. And I think if we allow those openings, those ruptures, and like you're saying, stay in the room and stay open when things get hard, my version of that is like, don't collapse on yourself, right? Because the the good girl programming that runs super deep in most women is like, okay, collapse and do whatever you need to do to fix this and make this better and, and make everyone happy. And in a way, it's just self-betrayal over and over and over and over again. And so not only when we hold ourselves and we remain open, are we staying open to what's available, but we're also holding ourselves and saying, okay, I'm I'm here for me in this too. Like, I'm going to hear you. I'm going to be open to you, but I'm also available for my own needs, my own desires to come through. And I'm holding the container for both of us to be met in this moment. And I think that is a thing that we are still practicing very much so, um, but it's changing everything. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I've been teaching for years that there's only two games ever happening, right? The outside in game and the inside out game. And I've said, you know, on camera many times that the outside in game uh, is when the circumstances are right, then I feel good. Yeah. Right. It didn't really hit me until really the last year and a half where I was still doing that, particularly with you. Yeah, right. yes. And how 
the subtlety of little looks and moments and the man part of me that wanted to control your cycles and your hormones and any waves. Good luck. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right? I can't even control that shit. <laughs> exactly. And I'm over here like, what do I do? What do I need to do to make sure she doesn't get mad at How me? can I calculate this? You can't. <laughs> yes. Yes. Right? So that that has been some of the juiciest work is noticing that A, I can't control it. B, anytime I'm doing that, I'm giving my power to you. Yeah. Um, and how that also at some level probably cause causes distrust between us for sure right anytime uh, we're abdicating our power and giving it over to our parents or the government or our friends or social media uh there's there's a lack of trust that occurs yeah. in the person that's receiving that because that's a lot to hold for somebody yeah but it's also like uh, what's coming through for me on this is there's a lack of trust like in this example there's a lack of trust for me that i can feel towards you because you're not trusting yourself Correct. to be able to hold whatever comes through, mm -hmm. right? And same for me, right? If I'm collapsing on myself, collapsing on my needs, collapsing on my voice, and in that self-betrayal, I'm not trusting myself. So how can you trust me? I'm not respecting myself. So how can you respect me? Mm -hmm. And it goes back to this age-old idea of we, we, we want this, this perfect person to do everything for us. Right? It's like, oh, when I find the perfect man or woman or person, they're, they're going to trust me. They're going to love me. They're going to respect me. They're going to revere me. They're going to be devoted to me. And it's like, okay, are you devoted to yourself? Are you respecting yourself? Are you taking care of yourself? Are you betraying yourself? Are you collapsing on yourself? Well, it, we're going to get what we're doing. Like, if we can't do it for us, how can we expect somebody else to do it for us? That part. You know? And that's such a, such a hard thing. That was such a hard thing for me to get because I think, again, this Disney version of love wants to sell us the idea that some someone's going to come in on a horse and save the day and be everything to you that your parents weren't, that society wasn't, and that you aren't to yourself. Yeah. But truly, the work starts here first. And when, when we take care of ourselves, we have our own backs and we advocate for ourselves, we can attract a partner that will do the same because the standard has been set. Okay, so that was a mic drop, and here's what we're going to do. We're going to rapid fire whether we, what are the signs that someone's wasting their time, even though we don't think they are, uh -huh. and how to know whether someone's actually a good fit. Mm -hmm. So let's just ping pong back and forth. Uh, I'll start with saying that if the idea of not being with this person continues to haunt you, over more than six months, then there's probably some valid stuff sitting in there. Because yes, we have emotions and we get angry with each other or sad with each other and, and, and those waves come and go, right? Sometimes they're tsunamis, sometimes they're ripples. But if for six months or longer or a little less, you constantly are sort of feel beckoned by stepping out of the space, then there's probably a strong likelihood that the chapter that you and that person have been in is over. And it's really just the fear that you have of disappointing or hurting them or figuring out the finances or the business that's in the way of you honoring the true yes that's sitting in your body for you and the rest of your journey. Okay, so I'm going to I'm going to catch that and take a different angle on it. Um I think it's really important to tap into the heart versus the head, right? And the head's the ego on this one. So I think a lot of times our head will be like, "Nope, screw this." Da 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 da. X Y and Z, they need to be this or that and they're not. And the heart is like, "Oh, but you know, you know, you know this is your person or or you know that this is a season or you know and and it's it's hard a lot of people say well how do you know how do you tap into your heart it's a practice um and it requires listening but a, a caveat to this this is where you have to do the work right if your heart is saying stay then you've got to show up and be willing to fill in all the gaps that you are waiting for that other person to fill in if you can do that and fill in all the gaps you'll notice a shift in the relationship. If you don't notice a shift in the relationship and you're really doing the work, then it's time to bounce. Real talk, 
I'm going to take that and counter it with <laughs> something else, which is whatever it is, if you're going to do it, if you're going to leave, leave at the top. Yes. Leave from your joy. Leave from connectedness. Leave from harmony. Leave from internal peace and peace with the person that, that has, has, has come in and to do this sacred dance with you. Out of 8 billion people on the planet, this walking, talking miracle has come in to shake you up, to, to, to love you up, to, to bring you to your knees, metaphorically, energetically, proverbially. And, and, and it's, it is the best gift you could give yourself, your partner, and the third entity called your relationship to leave at the top. And so what I mean by that is make a decision. Hey, okay, this is this feels like it's over, right? Whether you say it or not to that person. And then decide that, like Alexi said, whatever is missing, whatever you want, go back to dating, go back to adventuring, go back to sneaking in the bed and kissing each other's, you know, private parts and all the good stuff and like actually leave at the top and then and then make a decision right if it feel, if you get to the top and then you still want to go it's time it's time to go yeah i think another thing too is is values and vision right like if if we're if we're both looking at the same mountain and we both have the same values around like this is what matters in life this is what we're up to this is where we're headed not that you have to be in the same industry or want to do the same things in life but you have the same ideas about what's important i think that's a big thing that people really don't pay attention to right because you can get to these points in life like when life gets hard let's say, or new chapters like parenthood, that's when your values get tested. That's when things really get tested and you start to see the gaps in the values. So I would say looking at each other's values, looking at what's important to you. Um, and I also want to drop in what the thing that I shared with you. Um, this is a really great thing that you can use for yourself, no matter where you're at in your relationship. When we were going through one of our hardest times this past year, I was sitting with the idea like, what if we got divorced? Like, what would happen? How would I be different? How how would I change? Because you know how people are always like 10 times better in their next relationship or 10 times better in their second marriage? It's like, how would I be better? How would I be different? And I really started thinking about it. I actually wrote stuff down. I was like, oh man, why am I not doing that shit now? Like, why am I not being that woman right now? And it just hit me. Like, I I know, I know what I get to change. Most of us do, right? Like, most of us have had feedback from at least a few partners about certain things. Most of us get feedback from life about what's not working. Most of us can feel within ourselves where we're being out of integrity with our true essence, our true expression. So why am I not living that now and being that woman now? So the invitation for all of you, no matter where you're at in your relationship, is be the person the best version of you right now. And I know that's easy to say, but think about it in terms of this. If you got out of this relationship and you moved on, what would you do differently? How would you show up better? Do that now. Do that now so you can get to that top of the mountain and say, okay, do I want to stay or do I want to go? It's big. Blessings and blessings, beautiful souls. If you would like to continue this conversation in a community that is literally the best in the world called Sanctuary, check the show notes or go to www.thebridgemethod.org forward slash sanctuary. Yeah, come hang with us there. We get into all things spirituality. That is practical. How do you apply this to your life and live your fullest expression now so we don't have to wait to the end of our lives to get there? Ooh, ooh. Ah!